I'm happy to be here and I'm going to talk about AFC today, how we can push our boundaries outdoors and indoors with 6 gigahertz. This, it's a short session. It will set the context for what my team is going to talk next about uh, our DB10 9179, which was released today, and how this is a must-have feature for, for the same. Touching briefly on our Wi-Fi spectrum, one of the key milestones uh, happened in the Wi-Fi standards when FCC released 6 gigahertz band for unlicensed use. We got 59 new channels and our available spectrum increased by almost three times. So we had more channels, uh, more higher bandwidths, so we could get the speeds and the capacities, uh, and it brought the much needed relief to the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. And these speeds and this reliability enabled other uh, real-time uh, mission-critical applications. But there was a caveat. This 6 gigahertz band was also occupied by thousands of licensed users. There was point-to-point -point microwave, fixed satellite. We have TV broadcast services. And it was very important that these licensed users, the incumbents, are protected from, these wi for the, from the Wi-Fi users. So there, more regulations ca came in. So first around the channels, not the, the 6 gigahertz band was not adopted by all countries, uh, and then the entire band wasn't adopted. The, the North Americas and South Korea and a few other countries went with the whole band. Uh, Europe and uh, Australia, for example, only adopted the first half. China, we don't see any 6 gigahertz yet, and India, we started to see some news coming in with them considering the lower band. Now, the other restriction came around indoor versus outdoor use. So for indoors, you're allowed to use 6 gigahertz at an LPI power level, which is a PST of 5 uh, dBm per megahertz. That ensured that you're not interfering with any incumbents. But when it came to outdoors or to get a higher power indoors, you needed standard power and you needed AFC. So standard power allowed you to transmit at a higher power with 23 dBm per megahertz. And, but this uh, further brought some uh, limits on the allowed bands. So I'll talk about what is AFC. So this is a feature which will allow you to use unlicensed 6 gigahertz band using standard power. It allows indoors, outdoors, and external antennas. It's basically a cloud-based service that coordinates spectrum sharing with the incumbents in the 6 gigahertz band. Uh, for Cisco, the service resides in the cloud. Uh, how it works, the access points, every access point send an AFC request uh, to the service, and this request includes the lat, long, and height of the access point. And based on this request, uh, the AFC service sends a request to our AFC service provider, which is Federated Wireless, and they coordinate the spectrum sharing against the regulatory database. And they get an AFC response back, which has the allowed channels and power levels. And uh, this, uh, this response then gets to the AP, and the AP has to l operate within those limits. So, uh, and then this response is only valid for 24 hours. So by the time this window is ending, the AP sends another request. And then the AP can operate in standard power. I have a, I have a question, sure. you can go back. Yeah. Um, if the request is only for valid, valid for 24 hours, I've seen network outages longer than 24 hours. It feels like that's a single point of failure. What happens if Federated goes away for more than 24 hours? My enterprise network has to shut down at 6 gigahertz radios outdoors? Uh, we are, uh, with Federated, we, ha we have uh, SLAs to ensure almost 99.9% .9 uh, service availability. But the fallback is, um, more than that happening, the chances are the AFC response that came in is not favorable. So the fallback is, if you're not going on SP, for outdoors, 6 gigahertz will turn off. It will fall back on 5 gigahertz and 2.4. For indoors, the AP will fall back on LPI. It will still, it can still operate at LPI power levels. For indoors, but your outdoors, if you've got a 6 gigahertz only SSI, yes. then it's going to go away. Yes, definitely. And, and clearly, okay, yeah, all right, thank you. Okay, so with the, in general, uh, we are limited by the 36 dBm power level, but in real world, we've seen APs go to from 24 to 28 dBm with standard power. That's 3 to 6 dB gains that we have with uh, standard power. And um, just want to mention that there are further checks on the channels. Uh, in US, only Uni 5 and Uni 7 are allowed. On Ca in Canada, U Uni 6 is included as well. So we have the service available in US and Canada. It should be coming in the next few weeks, we're waiting for fin finalized approvals. 
And um, just I want to conclude, there are some design considerations that we need to keep in mind when planning for standard power. First is the use cases. We have to understand where we need standard power outdoor. It's a must. Uh, we need to extend our coverage outdoors. That before you plan for standard power, it, it is helpful to check the availability of channels in that location. Uh, we have tools available with that, with federated wireless. You want to check where what your client penetration is. Do you have dual capable uh, uh, devices, and then you have to plan for location, lat, long, and uh, height. So lat and long has to be automatically determined. Height, on the other hand, can be manually entered. And lastly, we have the configuration through our management platforms, uh, which is available through all our uh, Meraki Catalyst, Catalyst Center.